as i told the ird the rotor side implementation rotor side measurement is not available so i am uh, i am replacing that so in place of sorry this will be ird it is not l this ird it is replaced by this value now the differential equation finally it is turned like this because you see this lm lm cancelled and this tau r is nothing but the in one by tau r that is basically inverse rotor time constant and for the machine learning for the through the network to the neural network or any other deep learning method we need to measure the inverse rotor time constant instantaneously that's why in the modern electrical drive this concept is very important because as i told rotor resistance there is no direct measurement it is rotating it is very difficult so for the technology is not available and if you want to implement also there will be lot of difficulties so through the neural network or other deep learning method you need to because you know when the uh, for high power machine when the current is more it is producing heat so this resistance is getting increased and the the uh, the inverse rotor time constant value is changing time to time based on the uh process condition how much load it is needed all these things so for this we need the machine learning okay so finally this is the uh this is the, this is this is the equation okay now if i go to the laplace domain is it if i go to the laplace domain it is like this now you know in final value theorem steady state if you do that so this part will go this this part 1 by tr tower tower it is cancelled and imr is ist imr is is equal to ist so i can tell at steady state the magnetizing current is nothing but the stator direct axis current it's very simple now coming to the quadrature loop in the quadrature loop it is not simple like the direct axis loop this is my reference speed at what speed i need to rotate the machine and this is coming from the feedback the motor shaft is connected with the shaft incremental encoder which is giving the feedback this error signal is going to one uh, pi regulator which is producing producing the torque reference if you if you see the torque equation the isq the quadrature stator quadrature axis component it is analogous to uh, armature current this is compared to this will be compared again with the quadrature axis uh, actual current which is we are taking the feedback from the uh, motor three phase and it is converting to uh two axis so that is to be compared and finally it will go again through a regulator and producing the quadrature axis voltage stator voltage okay now similar way as we have done in uh, direct axis again this uh quadrature axis voltage is zero and this is already for vector control we made it zero so now your omega slip is like this okay now here one component is the psi r q that i need to replace so we know psi r q is this but for vector control we made it zero so my i r q is nothing but this so this value i will replace here
if I replace this, and we know what is psi R D already, it is L R R into magnetizing current. Now, finally, your omega slip, that means your slip frequency is one by tau R into I S Q by I S D because at steady state, the magnetizing current is nothing but the stator directed axis component. Already we have learned it. So now the omega slip is like this. So what is, what is omega slip? Synchronous minus, minus actual. So omega synchronous minus omega r. Now we are getting already encoder feedback. So if you add it, so this is, this is canceled only omega s. Omega is basically what? d theta s by dt. Now if I integrate, I'll get the theta. That is the instantaneous rotor flux position. So that theta is needed where? To convert the two phase current to, sorry, three phase current to two phase current. And wherever, again, when you are generating the modulating signal for the PWM in each phase, Basically, in the quadrature and the direct axis loop, we are getting the uh, voltage, two axis voltage. Now it is to be converted to three, three axis voltage, where we need the theta, instantaneous position. So this theta will be used there. So now you understood what is the, how the uh, control, how it is, Difficult. Now this is the model. Let us understand. <clears throat> so as I told, through this block, this is your machine. So there is sensor, current sensor. The three current sensor is coming. And this is a mathematical block, which is converting the three phase current to two phase, where you need the theta. The theta how is estimated just now I have shown you. And this loop is the direct axis loop, as I told. This is the set flux, which is first I told, which is compared with the ID, which is coming from this block, compared, and it is generating the state at direct axis voltage. And just now I have discussed the uh, uh, quadrature axis. So this is your RPM reference, which is getting feedback from the encoder. You see encoder is connected here. It is getting compared. It is generating the torque. It is generating the torque component, torque reference, which is again compared with IQ and producing the stator quadrature axis voltage. Now the theta estimation. What, what I told, what is the theta? Theta, what is omega slip? Omega slip is one by tau r, one by tau r into ISQ by ISD. So you see, I have taken the ISQ and this is the ISD. This value is inverse rotor time constant. After that, I am adding the RPM with that. This K is P by two, because it is all our measurement as stator side. We are measurement taking at State rotor side. So rotor to stator, it should be multiplied by pole by two. That's why I multiplied. And after that, it is in, it is coming here. What is coming? Here it is omega s. Now if you integrate, you will get theta. That theta I am giving here and here. So after that, it is getting this is the modulating signal for R phase, modulating signal for Y phase, modulating sig signal for B phase. Now it is compared with the Switching frequency. This is a ramp. Uh, this is a short uh, ramp pulse, and producing the PWM. This PWM, I am going. This is the A phase. I am giving the top top switch, and complemented pulse. It is giving to the bottom switch. My control is over. Here, this is the very simple concept of implementation of vector control and to understand the its dynamics. Okay, now the question is how to tune this PI having a KP and KI, this also having a KP and KI. 
and this also having a KP and KI. How to how to obtain that? Okay, this is a, this is a very critical task because without knowing the system transfer function, if you don't know where is my pole and where is my zero, how we will introduce the compensator? This is a very interesting thing, but this that thing I am not going right now because time is less. So you can uh, for so, uh, for that regulated tuning. I'll tell just few lines about that. Uh, you can uh, convert the higher order transfer function to first order system, and you consider the systems are critically damped. I'll take this one. You see, for critically damped, this is that, where the zeta is one. No, no overshoot. Moderate response, moderate time response. It is not, fa not faster, not slower. Things are stable. So you can consider the zeta is equal to one. Considering that one. You can convert. You can convert the all the three loop transfer function to a first order function. Then, as you are introducing PI regulator, so it will be uh, second order. So second order means S square plus two j omega n into S plus omega n square. So this is the setup. Whatever the model I have shown, this is the setup in my lab where I have made this one. It's a three-level inverter. And after comparing this, these are the value for the speed controller. If you see the quadrature axis outer loop, so this is the value, and this is the direct axis loop, flux loop, and this is the inner loop of the uh, quadrature axis. One thumb rule I have considered that the fastest loop in this three regulator, the fastest loop is the torque loop, which having a natural frequency of 100 hertz. These all are hypothetical, hypothetical, and it is uh, it is I have tuned medium voltage drive till 12 megawatt. So far, I have tuned nearly. 20 to 30 drives in the country so the uh, everywhere i use this and perfectly it is getting tuned okay and you can prove that also okay the why this natural frequency is like that it is lying more or less same and if your controller design if, if the disturbance cap when you are designing your pi regulator if the disturbance rejection capability is made slightly it is improved then these are slight uh, uh, mismatch from the practical and the analytical parameter value of the parameter it will be compensated so the fastest loop in the vector control is the torque loop which having a natural frequency of 100 hertz then is the flux loop which is of 10 hertz and you know the speed loop is very slow it's a most sluggish loop because it's a uh, it will it will basically in rotating machine it will generate the mechanical side flow fan air flow if you suddenly change the rpm flow is not going to change that much abruptly so these are the physical uh, uh, consideration to tune the things next ones when uh, we will uh, i will uh, come to you that time i will explain physically how to implement it, PI regulator. And there is a concept of uh, is a artificial intelligence. Uh, this, I can tell the fuzzy system, fuzzy logic is also uh, one kind of uh, 
fair replacement of uh, intelligence intelligent system okay so instead of the classical controller if you design a fuzzy controller you will get a better response you see this left side the left side this is the uh, classical controller and this is the fuzzy controller okay so you see that uh, re dynamic response this area the settling is much more better than the this one okay so sometime uh, the expert system can be replaced by fuzzy system what i mean to say so this is all about the vector control now i will explain where is the application of the artificial intelligence uh in uh, speed uh, frequency converter for the induction machine so now so far what we have understood that in in control the you see in the theta estimation the entire the entire dynamics of the control or the entire behavior of the control will be depending on the instantaneous rotor flux because every time it is predicting and making to zero quadrature making to zero then it is rotating here again it is making so this is the my right hand is the direct axis and this is the my left hand is the uh, rotor flux so when the direct axis position is here it is making zero then it is rotating here flux is here again making zero so it is going going like that so if i not able to predict the instantaneous rotor position it will be very difficult but i don't have direct measurement i don't have any equipment fixed in the inside the rotor so what we are doing we are getting the quadrature axis current and the direct axis current dividing multiplied with the inverse rotor time constant but the inverse rotor time constant is a function of resistance we can consider that the inductance is unchanged as a fair consideration but the rotor for high power machine the when current is high the temperature is getting raised and the resistance is getting changed which is dynamically changing the uh, inverse rotor time constant but if you set it as a per fixed parameter your your regulator design your compensator design should be you should be very cautious that you, you it can able to take that change and in, in spite of those change also the pole zero position should be such a place that it, the system overall system is to be uh, is remained stable so to overcome this let us understand the technique how to estimate how to predict the inverse rotor time constant dynamically as you understand it's a very complex system higher order system it is very difficult to de, de, de iso, uh, very difficult to isolate the transfer functions it is highly non linear in behavior rather than doing all the analytics let us get trained get trained how to get it you know your uh, when um, uh, you can think in your childhood when your uh, mother taught you a b c d simply she told this is one line one line and if you do it is called a why you have to do what that time you don't know that means you don't know the dynamics of that your mother trained you if you take a pen and put like this it will be a your brain trained if i have to write a i have to do this 
once your brain is get trained so when you need to write that a your hypothalamus is actuated by that trained network trained uh, memory which is stored it is instructing the particular location of your hypothalamus which is in turn giving the instruction to the actuator which is your hand to move like this so this is basically concept of neural network implementation of our neuron function electronically or electrically even though lot of things are involved in the neural network still something are not known we know we know uh, the construction of the neuron and how it is connected dendron and axon in between there is the neurofluid the neurotransmitter fluid which is basically helping to fire the uh, consecutive neurons so how the electrical signal is getting transmitted and what is the behavior what is the actual biological behavior of that neurofluid transmitter it is not uh, clearly known today people are doing research on that so actually this project these things uh, some of my student already that uh, madhu sudhi and uh, two three student from uh, jadavpur university they are working so uh, same thing i am explaining so once that that is over so it will be uh, with more explanation it will be explained so he, what we have done basically what we we are trying to do we are trying to train one neural network so basically this is the structure of a neural network there will be an input layer some hidden layer output layer and the output basically first you simply you consider there is a set of 